Hey guys, today I will talk about Crypt Custodian, a game that the Metroidvania community is eagerly awaiting its full release. Currently there is only a demo out, so my plan for this video is to talk about my experience playing it and suggest a few things that in my opinion would improve the game. If you have never heard of this game before, Perfect. Sit back and be prepared to learn about a game that harbors a lot of potential. The potential to become one of the best Metroidvanias released in the past decade. Feel free to share your opinion in the comment section as these types of videos are an excellent source of feedback for the developers to use so their games can reach their full potential. Now without further ado, let's jump into this video. When it comes to the best metroidvanias that I have played, a large map ready to be explored in a non-linear fashion is essential. One could say this is the most critical feature that defines the metroidvania genre itself. So far, I would say that Kyle Thompson, the developer of Crypt Custodian, has done a decent job on this. From the moment I set foot on the island, I was overwhelmed by all the different routes I could take. That is the beauty of a top-down metroidvania because the world felt more non-linear and explorable at first glance. Of course, this is only a demo and most of these routes would just lead me back to where I started from or to dead ends. Nevertheless, the amount of potential this game has set itself up for to excel in this area is impressive. I hope the final design is filled with interwoven pathways that lead to new locations and even shortcuts that connect to different locations in various ways. Something like what Dark Souls 1 offered. An explorable world where you would come across paths connecting different areas by chance. Or at least that's what it felt like. Furthermore, the world within Dark Souls 1 felt open, but it actually wasn't. The game would seamlessly nudge you into the correct path you needed to take at that moment. Now, I won't go in depth about Dark Souls 1 map design since it is a very intricate topic and a few minutes would not do justice. I just think that Crypt Custodian can certainly benefit from what From Software applied to their map design. Now, I might sound a little too ambitious as I have no experience in game design, but I have a feeling that this is possible, mainly thanks to the top-down structure of this game. Regardless, as I said before, I believe Kyle Thompson is on the right track with the map design based on the demo, and I can't wait to see the complete map design upon the full release. One of the most beautiful personal moments in Metroidvanias is when I acquire a new ability or skill and the little man in my head goes, Eureka! At that moment, I realized I could access a previous location within the game that was blocked. Of course, this feeling of achievement is soon followed by an anxiety because my goldfish-like memory cannot recall which areas were inaccessible. Another pillar for Metroidvania games is a unique set of unlockable skills or abilities essential for accessing specific areas. Of course, these areas have to be necessary for game progression. As mentioned before, I encountered many dead ends while playing Crypt Custodian. What I didn't mention is that some of them seemed accessible later on. This was confirmed at the end of the demo when I got a sneak peek of a few more abilities that the game would offer upon full release. With that said, even in the demo, the game offered a few purchasable passives and actives. This is where we get my first advice on making the game more accessible. Upon purchasing my first ability, the game told me that I could equip these abilities only at a resting shrine, which is equivalent to checkpoints. This was done through a conversation with another NPC. I think it would be better if this information was also passed down through a visual message. I'm probably not the only one who's very bad at skimming through texts and excels more in visual instructions. Now, this is a minor thing, but it confused me about why I couldn't use any of my new abilities. It wasn't until I went to a shrine and saw the option. Aside from that, I believe the abilities, skills, and the backtracking map design are heading in the right direction, at least based on what I saw in the demo. When I look back at all the games I have enjoyed in the past, most of them have one thing in common, great boss designs. Now, multiple factors contribute to a good boss design, and in my opinion, they go hand in hand. These are aesthetically good looking bosses, bosses with appropriate difficulty, and last but not least, bosses who profoundly contribute to the story. Off the top of my head, I can think of multiple titles that have used all these attributes. For example, Ender Lilies, Hollow Knight, Dark Souls, and so on. 
These games were able to create bosses who not only looked unique and challenging, but also had their own distinctiveness and role in the story. However, Crypt Custodian lacks this so far. The world of Crypt Custodian is aesthetically beautiful and expressive, but its story does not match its visual appeal or use it for its benefit. We have the proper body, but the soul is missing. Now, don't get me wrong, the storytelling is pretty decent, but I believe there is much more potential even early on. I will give an example of how this game's story could have more substance to it from the start and its relation to the bus and let me know what you all think. Crypt Custodian is about a cat named Pluto in the afterlife serving time in quote-unquote hell. He's punished with the task of keeping hell clean by sweeping dirt. With this premise alone, Kyle Thompson has a framework to create a game with an incredible story. During my exploration, I came across an NPC named Pebble. Pebble is a sweet character and she has a great background story. She tells me she is the only one left cleaning the area because everyone else has given up and gone to do something else. So she's alone, sweeping dirt all day. It is important to note that that killing mobs will also grant you dirt, since dirt is basically the currency in this game. Now hear me out, what if this dirt scattered all over this land is the remnant of all the spirits that Pebble was talking about? The spirits that gave up on cleaning and left, what if they became dirt after a while due to not having a purpose anymore? Now you are probably thinking, how does this relate to the boss? Well the first boss you fight in this game is a jar full of spirits. Fighters. It is a great boss fight and with perfect difficulty, mechanics, and three different phases. Yet, it has no identity, no purpose for the story aside from progression, which is fine for most metroidvanias. I think this boss would have been better with one simple change. Instead of spiders, make it filled with dirt. That would tell a visual story about the jar coming to life through absorbing all the excess dirt. In this example, Carl Thompson could give this boss more identity through this simple change. In my imagination, it would have been even better if I walked into that boss fight hearing screams or cries of all the trapped spirits inside the jar begging to be set free. This would show us the consequences of not cleaning the island and being purposeless. Thus, the story is told using the game's beautiful visuals rather than just conversations. This was just my example and I'm sure there are plenty of other ways to put a spin on things to make the player more invested. I know this is just a demo, perhaps the story will improve as we explore the world more. I just think the world and its inhabitants could have offered more of a unique identity from the beginning. In our previous discussion, we explored the various avenues for advancement in a Metroidvania game. Another notable strategy is what I like to call Use Your Gamer Intelligence, a concept Howard Gardner seemingly overlooked, which might explain why he sucked at making Metroidvania games. I'm referring, of course, to puzzle solving. While not a mandatory element of a great Metroidvania, it undeniably enhances the game's overall atmosphere. The good news is that Crypt Custodian introduces several segments that require puzzle solving to advance. The puzzles may not be particularly challenging, yet they provide that gratifying sense of a mental workout as if to say, perhaps my frontal lobe is finally maturing. These puzzles are not the only things that help with the atmosphere of the level design. As you travel the island, you'll encounter hidden challenges that offer bonus stats and other perks. Completing these was not the easiest thing. Additionally, there are statues scattered across the island that summon mobs. You must defeat these mobs to move forward. My sole critique is the lack of rewards after defeating these mobs. Introducing a small incentive for overcoming these challenges would be a welcome addition. Nonetheless, the inclusion of puzzle solving and these secret trials significantly contributes to the level design of Crypt Custodian, making the journey more captivating and enjoyable. And let's not forget, all these features are merely a fraction of what the demo offers. Talk about potential. The world of Crypt Custodian is breathtaking. The art design is stunning and the level design is meticulously crafted. For a game still in its demo phase, it left a strong impression on me. This is precisely why I was compelled to create a video about the demo alone. The game brims with potential and I was eager to contribute to its journey toward realizing that potential. Before concluding this video, I wish to offer one more piece of feedback which I hadn't found an appropriate place for earlier. I've noticed that 
that the player character Pluto seems to not move in sync with the world itself. It's hard to explain, but the movements feel off. While the combat design and attack animations are flawless, the character models become out of sync during basic walking or running. This issue is likely limited to the demo, which is why I saved it for the end. Nonetheless, Kyle Thompson, I hope you find this video helpful in some way. With that, I'll see you all in my next video.